Peace Family. As you can tell by the title, this should be an interesting one. I'm going to be talking about... The, I'm good. This always happens. I'm sorry. I gotta get this. Hello? Oh my goodness, I yapple, huh? Alicia? Definitely sorry. I almost got... Really? You saw that, huh? That a few years. I, I was just doing it for... You want to do what? You want to make love in the back seat of your car? Awesome. I'll be right. Oh. Huh? You want me to drive? Peace family, this is Ayapo, and this is Ayapo Yapa. Ayapo Yapa is an acronym that stands for if you aren't pissed off, you aren't paying attention. Uh, at the very top, I want to give a huge shout out to Nikki Justice. Nikki Justice is the voice that you heard on the other end of the phone at the beginning of the video. Um, I will provide a lab so that you can go to her channel and uh, see her content and by all means like and subscribe to Nikki Justice you'll enjoy yourself you'll learn some things my favorite thing uh, to watch is her Taco Tuesday so anyway very interactive very good channel lots of good content go subscribe to Nikki Justice at Nikki Justice 61 and like I said I'll provide the lab at the bottom um, today we are going to talk about chickens and why are we going to talk about chickens because I did a share saying that we've already won what does that have to do with chickens in particular chickens with their heads cut off well look with the with the way the things have been going for our people for for centuries and with the way that they're going now with cops gunning us down with impunity, with uh, cops gunning us down and then receiving no punishment whatsoever. And as a matter of fact, they get paid, uh, like paid um, um, administrative leave after a shooting, and which equates to a paid vacation for them. I'm gonna tell you something about the psyche of these people and this is something we have to understand and these are these are just reason after reason after reason that we need to separate from these people if I were to gun somebody down okay even if it was justified I don't know that I would ever be able to pull another gun on another person pull a weapon on another person Maybe I could, depending on the circumstances. You're coming in to hurt me or mine. Yeah, you're going to be a chalk outline. And that's a beautiful thing, as far as I'm concerned. However, if I were a police officer or someone in that capacity, or even even if I was just, just driving and I, and I accidentally hit somebody and killed them, I don't know if I could get behind the wheel again. But you have these cops who gun who gun unarmed black men down and black women and black children you know have them gun them down and then when they're when they finally when they do have something done to them which is typically just putting them off the force they they go to their union and and seek to be reinstated that shows you how heartless they are that, that absolutely shows how heartless they are because they they have no no feeling I mean who who does that what human being could do that but they do it all the time they'll gun somebody down gun them down and, and you know and it's not right that they did it 
and then they'll they'll just they'll just fight and fight and fight to hold it, to keep their position so they can keep going out and doing the same thing over and over again. What does this have to do with the headless chickens? This is Mike. Mike is a chicken that had his head cut off in April of 1945. Do you know when Mike finally stopped moving? Before I before I tell you, I'm gonna give you a couple links. There are two links. The first, and, and both of them contain very graphic, um, uh, very graphic images. Okay, so if you don't have a stomach for seeing such things, don't go to it. But um, I, I'm giving these links to make a point. I had considered putting the putting the actual video on my video, but I didn't want to get a community strike. Um, and as our black YouTubers know, you can have all kinds of foolishness, all kinds of craziness up on uh, up on a website or on your channel rather, and be white, and it just 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 goes but the second you put it on yours then you get a strike now why is it able to play through someone else's channel with no problems but then when you connect it to yours you get a strike for it that's just um, you know that's just a little side thing but I'm gonna give you the two labs uh, and once you go there just come back and start back at this point. One of them, the first one is going to be a, a short video showing a chicken getting his head cut off. And the second video is a snake that has just gotten his head cut off and it's just the snake's head. Okay, like I said, very graphic content. If you don't have the stomach for that type of thing, don't watch it and I'll try, I'll do my best to explain it. But those of you who do want to watch it, I'll give you a moment. Go on and watch it and then come on back. Okay. The first video that showed the chicken with his head cut off. The chicken got his head cut off and then it's running around the yard. It's flapping. It's doing all these things. Okay. It even, even goes airborne a few times. I mean, they just go. And I've I've seen a I've never seen a chicken get his head cut. I saw a goose get his head cut. Yeah, and they just and they just go 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 go. And some of them go for longer than others. And then as far as that snake went, in the clip of the snake, it shows this snake. This it, all it is is the snake's head that they just cut off, and the snake is still trying to bite. And anyone who would have put their finger near that snake's mouth would have gotten bitten and poisoned. Okay. Finally, I go back to young Mike there. Okay, that, that had his head cut off in uh, in April of 1945. Mike died, or Mike finally expired, or or, or stopped moving in March because he got beheaded in April, and he it stopped moving in March of 1947 okay he got beheaded in 1945 okay and then finally got and finally was totally done in 1947 okay and this isn't like some hoax thing this actually this actually happened you can go on and read about it there's many places you can read about it that chicken lived for two years without with his head cut off walked around did everything and there's many other videos that you can find on YouTube that shows animals that you know, get their heads cut off and they just they continue to move. But what they are is moving corpses. Because once that head was cut off, that animal was dead. It was just moving around. It just looked like it was alive. I think that you see what I'm getting at now. You have these... You have these these uh, these race soldiers you have these white supremacists you have the, the white supremacists and, and all these people. 
and and the whole system of whiteism, right? It looks like they're still alive, okay? But actually, you know, after that six after the six thousand years was up, the Most High cut the head off, and now they're just flapping around. They look like they're alive. They look like they're still viable. But they're as dead as Mike, they're as dead as that 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 one chicken that was floating around, flat, you know, flitting around. They're as dead as that snake was. The reason I threw that snake in there is because that snake was still dangerous. Until it finally, you know, until it finally just totally expired, it was still able to cause damage if you got too close to it. Okay, so that's that's the situation that our people are in right now. We're watching we're watching a, 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 a group that are in their in their death throes. Okay, and there's no coming back from that. They you know they chop the chicken's head off. There's no coming back from that. They chop that snake's you know head from his body. There's no coming back from that. No matter how much life they cling to, there's no coming back to that. So, so it's figuratively white people are fighting for life. Figuratively, not literally. Well, in, in some cases, even even literally, because their their birth rates are dropping, opioids are, are killing them off, and all these different things. But and, and they're killing themselves. But. But figuratively, as far as the system of whiteism, it's, it's dead and it's over. It is a chicken with its head cut off. And we're watching this still moving around and we think it's alive because it's moving. But it's, it's dead already. At what point did that chicken die when that, when that axe came down? The chicken was dead when the axe separated his head from its body. And all they, all the people had to do was wait it out. I want to throw a quick side note in there for those of you who saw the video of the chicken. Did you notice what these, what these white people were doing? I've watched different, different videos. And when, when black people kill an animal for food or whatever, they just they just kill the animal. It might look brutal, but they but they just kill it because they're getting ready to eat it. These people were were laughing. They're laughing at this at the torment of this sentient creature. And I have a problem with that. But that's the nature of the people that we're dealing with. Whereas the true royal family would say that's the nature of the beast. They think that they, they think that stuff is funny. They think that they think death and suffering is funny like that, and it's not funny. They were straight up laughing, and I saw nothing funny about it. So what? So what? If if it's just a chicken, it was a sentient living creature, and they thought it, and they thought it was funny. They're sitting there laughing about it, what, laughing at a creature in terror. And this is and this is who we're dealing with. This is who we're dealing with. When you're dealing with the fragile ego of the, of the white people by by which by whom we're surrounded, it's not a safe place to be. Because the entirety of of white supremacy. I, I, I hate to use the phrase, but I have to use it because that's, that's, that's how we know it. But that's why I'm always doing these air quotes. When it comes to white supremacy, <laughs> white people themselves prove, ironically, that they know they are not superior to black people or anybody else. They prove it with their actions. How do they prove it? The way that they prove it is, I'm going to give you, give you this analogy. If I'm vying for the affections of a, of a, of a, a lady, and 
there's another man vying for her affections also. If I think that I am a better man than he is, if I believe that I'm a better man than he is, you know what I'm going to do? I'm just going to win her by being the better man. That's it. I'm going to win her affections by being the better man. If I think that he's a better man than me, you know what I'm going to do? I'm going to go to her. I'm going to talk. I'm going to talk disparagingly to her about him. I'm going to call the police on him and get him in trouble if I can. I'm going to sabotage him in any way that I can. Why am I sabotaging him? Because I know that he's because I know that he's better than me. If I really thought he was better than me, I would just I would just be better and get my woman. Okay. So the the same thing happens. The same thing has happened in society. If you if if white people really thought they were that superior, they would just be superior. They would just do it. They wouldn't have to set actual systems and mechanisms and laws and acts in place to keep another race from progressing, to hold down another race, if they really, truly thought that they were so much better. Because if you think that you're that much better, you just be better. Because nobody can catch you. If I'm running against somebody that I'm faster than, I know I'm faster than they are, I'm not going to tie their shoelaces together. I'm not going to do anything. I'm just going to outrun them because I'm faster than them. But the fact that I have to do underhanded tricks just proves that I know that I'm not. So everything that they do, everything that they do, shows that they know they are not superior. Their, their actions say it. Not, we don't have to say anything. We don't have to do anything. Their own actions show it. Their own actions prove it. Ulta Banga. <laughs> this is um, Ulta Banga. In 1906, he was put in the Bronx Zoo. He was uh, from one of the pygmy tribes. And he was put in the Bronx Zoo. And <laughs> he was he was exhibited as an animal. They took a human being and placed them in a zoo and exhibited them as an animal. What, what, makes, what makes people think that people change? I would really like to know that. What makes people believe that people change? What what changes what changes are there? You can change laws. Okay, and and uh, I think it was on Sister Shayla's um, uh, channel that I I mentioned in the comments. I said, you know, we went through the civil rights movement and we fought because we didn't appreciate white people looking at us like dirt and treating us like dirt, you know, while they were while they were serving us the food that they spat in. And so after the civil rights movement, now they smile at us and they treat us politely as they serve us the food that they spat in. It doesn't change. They don't change. People don't. I said this a long time ago when my take. Let's calm down. People don't change. People do not change as groups. I don't I don't white splay to white people. They love to play dumb. They, <laughs> Ola Banga was a human being that they put into a zoo. And uh, it just shows what they really think of us. And 
I'll ask, you know, I'll ask the final time, at least in this video, what makes you think any of that has changed? What in the world make, would make you think any of that has changed? Where, when it comes to, when it comes to, like, whiteism, just understand black people. Just understand one thing. When a, when a person is being taught to be a pilot, you know, they're taking flying lessons or whatever, one of the first things that they're taught is just pay attention to the instrument panel. Only pay attention to the instrument panel. Don't look out the windows. Don't pay any attention to anything. Um, that's one of the things they said killed uh, JFK Jr. Was he was pil piloting a plane. He was inexperienced. It was nighttime. And he was paying attention to the way that he felt in the plane. But he wasn't paying attention to the instrument panels. The instrument panels would have told him that he was in a nosedive. But he didn't feel like he was in a nosedive. And so he, he, dove the, he, or he uh, flew the plane straight into the water. Okay, killed everybody on board. Including himself. The reason I'm telling you about the looking at the instrument panel is don't be don't be dismayed by the things that we see happening around us that looks that makes it look like we have not won this war that, that it makes it look like this thing isn't already over with. Don't pay attention to that. Okay. Pay attention to the instrument panel. Pay attention to the declining birth rates. Pay, pay attention to the opioid crisis that's wiping them out. Pay attention to the, uh, the fertility clinics. They're losing all the, all the embryos. You know, pay attention to the fact that they're murdering each other. Okay? Don't look at it like we've lost because we have not We have won. Um, so that's about it for, for this share. And yeah, I'm kind of struggling, struggling through it because I have a, I have a lot of thoughts, you know, a lot of thoughts on this. Whenever, I'm going to try to close this up. Look, whenever you, you think about what's happening with, with white people and white ism, just remember what I just think about the chicken with his head color. It looks like it's alive, but it's dead, dead, dead. It's over with. The head's gone. It's chopped off, and now you're just basically waiting for it to expire. And so we have to be patient. But it, it, but while we're being patient, we have to be vigilant because this is a this is a dangerous time for our people because these are their these are their last. You know their last gasps, and they're and they're scared, and they're and, and they're pissed off, and they're and they um you know they, they and they're fragile. <laughs> they're fragile. You, you're walking around in the midst of a bunch of fragile, broken, scared people, and that's very dangerous. So we have to be vigilant at all times. You know, know where you are, know where what you're doing, and. To the best of your ability, just stay clear. You know, just stay clear. And you'll be all right. We're all going to be all right. Because this whole, this whole mess actually is over with. Okay. So, that's, uh, that's all I have to say about that. Um, of course, always going to shout out uh, Sister Ajali. And you know the, the uh, your radical home sister, and this black by the book is a beautiful thing. Uh, watch the commercial; it's on both my channel and on Sister Angelie's channel. Uh, just watch the commercial. Uh, go to Amazon, read some of the reviews, read the first chapter of the book. It's a very good read. 
and uh, you won't regret buying it. Uh, also, be sure and visit Leo Johnson's live streams. Um, that brother, he, he just has a very enjoyable laid back live stream. If you ever catch him and, you, and you're just wanting to, you know, listen to somebody or, or, or talk with the family and gather, that's a good live stream to get on. Angela, 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 be fabulous you. Uh, she is at about 376 subscribers, something like that. She's working toward a thousand subscribers. She does several different kinds of uh, several different kinds of shares. My favorite one of hers is notes on the news feed, but she does other ones. And uh, by all means, go and subscribe to that sister. It doesn't cost anything to subscribe to someone's channel. And it helps them. And uh, we need to always just keep in mind that we want to help our people to move upward and to move forward. And I told her, uh, I told her before, I want to see her hit a thousand before I hit a thousand. You know, because it's not for me. It's not. It's not a competition. All of our people just need to rise up together and to see and, and to get out of this uh, this uh, white whiteism mindset of dog eat dog and there's only room at the top for one all this garbage absolute garbage you know there's room at the top for everybody and it's a beautiful place to be especially when you look and you see our people there so again uh, go to um, I'm going to give you the lab for all these also but go to Be Fabulous You and that's Angela by all means subscribe help her to get to a thousand you know be one of our charter subscribers that gets in on that before you know 1,000 let her get more subscribers than me okay um, there's um let's see I mentioned Leo Johnson uh, there's also uh, the, inf the the information show I'll give you the lab to that there's some good information and good talk on that real talk uh, it's another growing channel and the thing that's so good about some of these smaller channels like mine and, uh, and you know, information show and so on is that, they, that they're highly interactive you know, in the early stages because you can, you can uh, contact them, get feedback and so on. And it's just because we're small enough to do that. And as we grow, you know the deal. Uh, it gets a little more difficult to do that. But, you know, all things must grow also. Um, let me see. I, I don't want to leave anybody out that I was trying to make. Oh, brother, how could I? Be? I'll be doing my first. <laughs> I'll be doing my first live stream tomorrow. It's going to be at nine o'clock. It's going to be Ayapo's movies with the family. The movie is going to be drum roll, please. There's no drum here. It's going to be Dread, and it was the sisters who who. Uh, turn the tide on that one. All the brothers, it was odd. All the brothers wanted to see Birth of a Nation. All the uh, sisters were, were opting for Dread. So so Dread it is. And it's going to be at 9 o'clock. Originally I was saying it was going to be uh, from 10 o'clock to 10 o'clock or 11 o'clock to start. But many, many people um, uh, couldn't do that time because it was a little too late. So we're going to be starting at 9 o'clock Eastern time. Okay, I'm on the uh, I'm on the East Coast, so it'll be nine o'clock Eastern, and uh, that's about it. And I love you, family. Much love and respect, peace and blessings. And uh, I'll see you, I guess, tomorrow for the live stream. It'll be my first one, and I hope to see you there. Much love.